What's up guys, I'm Lee Morse with fstoppers.com and you are about to watch an excerpt from Joey Wright's 20 hour long tutorial on swimwear photography. To learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. And if you'd like to download the raw file and follow along with Joey in Photoshop, you can do that at the link below. Right, guys, we are here at a new location with Mela. This cool old boat that we found, we really just stumbled upon this and we figured we should definitely take advantage of it. It's got a lot of cool texture. I like the color in it. So uh, Mela had this suit that I think has almost a wetsuit type of feel. In fact, I think I own a wetsuit that is exactly the same colors. So just to me, I thought it was like the perfect suit to put on a boat because it looks like something she would definitely be sort of uh, like almost an active wear type of suit that she could dive with and whatnot. So I think it's the appropriate suit for this location. I think the blue and yellow is gonna look really nice. I'm thinking that the shade in there is gonna be pretty good on its own. We're gonna have some interesting light because there are windows that are gonna bring in a little bit of a natural hair light and there's gonna still be light wrapping around coming into the boat. Uh, one other thing you might notice about how I have Mela uh, ready to go is that her hair is back in a braid. I specifically asked Crystal to put her hair in a braid because it's just super windy right now and I didn't want to deal with her hair just blowing in her face. And also braids are just uh, general hair style you would see when women are doing something active uh, in order to keep the hair out of their face. So it kind of makes sense to go along with the, the active wear suit. Uh, out in this condition, something she could literally just dive in the water and know she comes up and her hair is back. And we may even get her wet at some point and just leave it that way, but we'll see how it goes. So let's first start by Mela. Let's have you just go ahead and sit right in there. I'm gonna test the natural light and see what I get and then see if I need to bring in any extra modifiers or help uh, from my assistant, Chris. Okay, let's just take a shot here. So I am working at F5.6. Uh, one one twenty fifth of a second, ISO 200. And it, I think it's a great exposure. However, a couple things that I see are off. She's got these really hot spots that are only on the shoulder and the hair uh, that I wanna fix. So Chris, I'm gonna bring you in with the sun swatter. See if I can have you just stand. Um, maybe if you could walk around to the edge of the boat and then flag some of that sun that's coming in through that window. I think that'll help. I chose f5.6 as my aperture uh, for a couple reasons. One, I wanna pick up all of this detail that's in the boat with the steering wheel and the wood. I think it just looks super cool. So I don't wanna lose that by shooting any wider uh, than f5.6. I think I'll get it nice and focused. Uh, if it's not, I can always crank it up. But also at f5.6 to get a good proper exposure on her, I'm already down to one 1 25th of a second on my shutter speed. I really don't wanna go much lower than that, especially shooting with my 7200 because then I'm gonna really start to risk a uh, camera shake and getting a blurry shot. So Chris, let's go ahead and bring the sun swatter in, see if we can help out some of this harsh light. So now I've got Chris in position. I'm gonna have him bring the sun swatter down to uh, kill that highlight on her. Just soften a bit, Chris, let's go ahead and do that. And you can just see instantly how much nicer that is. I can see Chris's foot in the photo. Uh, Chris, if you could just move her just a little bit out of the shot, that's great. And even if I have to Photoshop out a little bit of Chris back there, I think it'll be much easier than dealing or trying to deal with that highlight later in post. So let's go ahead and take another shot and see what we're getting as far as lighting. And then I'll really start to play with the pose once I'm happy with the lighting. Much nicer, okay, cool. I'm really happy with the light. So I think from this point, I've got the light how I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and just start working with Mela and experimenting with the poses and try to get as many cool shots as I can out of this one little spot. Okay, Mela, cool. I like the Indian style that you're doing right now. Um, maybe bring your right foot up because from where I am, I'm gonna chop it off a little bit. So I could just go up and shoot down a little bit. I'm liking that, it's a little dark. So I'm just gonna go ahead to F 4.5. See what I get, much better. Although I'm afraid I might lose some of the detail that I want, I'm just gonna hang in there at F5 and go down to one one hundredth of a second and work from there. Also, I think I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this 
horizontally because I think there's too much cool stuff in that boat to leave out of the photo. Very cool. I'm really happy with this whole look. I just think that I want you maybe more positioned to the right side of the frame. So let's do this. Assume that I'm gonna leave this side open. So I want you facing your pose like you are right now. You just kind of adjusted this way. So that way you're looking into the shot in the open part of the frame. And let's switch the legs because now your knee is pointing right at the camera. Good, I like that better. Perfect. I'm also noticing as I shoot her that if I catch anything outside of the boat, it's going fully blown out white. So I'm just gonna try to frame this up where all I'm seeing is all the shadowed area in the boat. Killer, I love it. Okay, here we go. I got my light in. Mela, I just want you to feel free to move a little bit at a time, okay? There we go, nice, I like that. Cute, look off camera to your right, good. Eyes at me, just waiting for Chris again. There we go, good. Let's see here, I'm gonna do a few horizontal. Great, love it. I like that, I like what you just did. Mela is a natural, she is just posing for me. Uh, Mela, in fact, you're almost making it too easy. Can you challenge me a little bit more and let me try to pose you some? So that way I'm helping uh, some of the viewers a little bit more. Cool, all right, so I'm just having Mela slow it down. She's like too good uh, for demonstration purposes. So um, let's try this. Let's get both feet up on the yellow part. There we go. And maybe slide your left foot out in front of you a little bit more so I don't hide the right leg completely. And just so it's not a totally like pose type of look. Let's maybe just kind of flop your left knee over toward the camera a little bit. There we go, good. So it looks a little more relaxed, great. And let's also try not to lock your left elbow. So just kind of relax it a little bit, good. I like that. And then let's take your right hand and just put it up on that little um, knob there. Good, maybe instead of bending it down like that, let's uh, drop the elbow and let the hand just kind of grab on, it's perfect. Now, the last thing you're gonna do is once I lift up the camera and start shooting again, just really stretch, arch the back, shoulders back. Great. Okay, perfect. Good. Good, good, good. I like the head movements you're giving me. Eyes at the camera again. Good, good, good. Let's get you sitting where the uh, steering wheel is on the boat. This way I can get her head out of the area where it's white. I feel like it's just chopping through her head. I like that. I like you sitting in there. Perfect. Cool. It looks super relaxed. Like you really are on this boat and just like hanging out. All right, guys, we got some great shots of Mela just using the natural light while cutting it down a little bit with the sun swatter from behind. Uh, I think I want to get another shot in the scene before we move completely. And this time I want to get the sky, the mountains, everything, the boat, the only way I'm gonna be able to properly expose for that sky and to kind of darken that a little bit without it being blown out in the background is to bring in some major light that can overpower the sun. I'm gonna do that with my Profoto B1, which could be any strobe uh, that you have. Probably something stronger than a speed light though. I just don't think that would work in this case. So we're gonna go ahead and bring Chris in with my B1 uh, attached to a shoot through umbrella. I'm choosing the shoot through for two reasons. One, because it's just gonna spread light everywhere and that's okay. I wanna try to light her and fill in some of these shadows in the boat. And also because the wind is blowing this way. So in order for Chris to shoot that way, I would rather have that wind wrapping around the umbrella than him trying to use it as a bounce umbrella, which would catch it like a sail or probably snap the umbrella itself. So Chris, let's go ahead and bring you in. I'm also gonna switch lenses, put on something wider to catch this whole scene. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the 70 to 200 and get out my 24 to 70. And Mela, I'm gonna have you come out and stand probably either on the dock or on the corner of this boat. Um, in fact, maybe just right there where it's up a little higher because I wanna make sure I can see her feet in this shot. I'm gonna to try to do a full body landscape and catch the whole scene. So let's go ahead and see what we can get with that. So here's the shot that we're gonna do next. I've got Mela just standing just on that little lip of the boat. She's in the sun. I'm bringing Chris in with the B1. We're gonna go ahead and just expose in camera for the sky first without the help of the strobe. So let me go ahead and take that shot now. I am at going all the way up to F18 and 1 250th of a second. So that should keep me within a safe sync speed for working with a strobe. Uh, I'm maxing out at F18 because it's just so bright. I am shooting like right into the sun in order to get that sky back and get some detail there. I've just got to go uh, just really high on the aperture. Also, 
If I wanted to get it a blurry scene in the back, this would be a great time to use the ND filter, but I want to do this super detailed shot. So I'm okay that at F18, everything's gonna be in focus. So now that I've got my sky exposed properly without the flash, I'm gonna bring the strobe in. So here we go at five on the strobe and we got nothing. Chris, let's just go ahead and go full power. I think that's really where we're gonna have to be with all this sun. All right, cool. So we're at 10. Okay, here we go. And full power. Let's see what we get. Awesome. That is definitely something we can work with. So this is where I want to be with the strobe. In fact, this is as far as I can go with it. So I'm just kind of have to kind of work with that. And uh, Mela, let's do what you were just doing. I liked when you had the knee up, the right knee. Good. I like that a lot. That's cool. I like the hands. Just make sure you feel really relaxed with the hands. I mean, I know it's a posy shot in general. I'm really kind of going for like the hero shot here. So it's naturally uh, gonna look a little extra posy, but I'm okay with that. I think uh, this will be a cool shot uh, to get just a cool effect. This is definitely not going for the natural look, but let's go ahead and see if we can mix things up. Good, good. Nose this way just a little bit. I like when you hold the hair, actually go ahead and just, and just get your elbow out a little bit more. Okay, cool. I think we got a cool shot in here just for one little quickie before we leave this scene. The only thing that I would wanna fix is to basically pull a little color and brighten up what's going on inside the shade of the boat. And also the mountains are a little dark. Uh, I could bring in another flash and light that up, but there's still no way I can light up the mountains. So what I'm gonna have to do is just pull out the shadows in post, which is a really easy fix. So rather than spending 10 minutes trying to set up some new light out here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say I've got the shot I need to finish it off later in post. So Mela, thank you. Let's go ahead and change you into one more look before we leave this whole location, okay? I just had Mela dip in the water. I asked her to just get her hair wet without getting her face and her makeup wet. So I had her just lean back, uh, which is always important if you're gonna go for the wet hair look is try to preserve the makeup. So now I've got Mela, she's wet. It kind of goes with the look. Mela, I'm gonna have you walk out onto that boat, just onto the little blue ledge there. Uh, just like if you were kind of walking down so the So that was the a boat. very short excerpt of Joey shooting on location, and we're now about to go into Photoshop. I wanna make it clear that this is towards the end of the tutorial, and Joey takes everything that he's already taught and does final edits of these images. So keep in mind that Joey's going to be moving through this image very, very quickly. He's also going to be using some actions and some plugins that you may or may not have, but we are releasing the raw file in the link below if you'd like to follow along and try to create a similar shot. Okay guys, our next image that we're gonna work on start to finish is this shot of Mela on the boat. Um, this was one that we shot with the strobe and I used my 24 to 70, so I shot this pretty wide. Uh, in Lightroom, we just cranked up the uh, shadows in this one a bit, so we pulled out some of that effect in the trees and the inside of the boat. Uh, we also pulled out the sky that way. Um, but it definitely revealed some issues. I'm just gonna zoom in real quick and It's time for somebody to do a little Sensor cleaning because there are like I don't know what that is an eyelash or something on my sensor There's just little spots everywhere on this photo. So also poor Mela got destroyed by mosquitoes at some point and uh, We're gonna have to uh, fix that up a little bit and on top of all that uh, we've just got some things I want to get rid of um, such as the uh, buoy in the water. There's definitely some spots there. Um, I'm even debating on getting rid of that rope, uh, but to, to be honest, I just, to me, it's not a deal breaker. Um, although it does give the sense that the boat is tied off to a dock. So why don't, you know what, let's just, let's get rid of that too. Uh, in fact, why don't we start with that? I think we've got a, um, this is a good little lesson here for getting rid of long lines in a photo and I'll show you guys the best way to deal with it. Let's grab a clone stamp, make sure it's on the normal blend mode and 100% flow and opacity. And this is how I would address it. If we just say, let's just for 
shits and giggles, try to grab the spot healing brush and go ahead and just paint the whole thing and see what it does on its own. That is actually pretty awesome. Um, I'm very happy with that, to be honest. But let's try uh, one other fix. I'm just going to undo that for a second. Um, if I want to just be a little, a little more specific with it, let's do this. If I'm going to get rid of a line and it's meeting up with another part of the image, I just take the clone stamp and get rid of that where it's sort of touching uh, over there. So I would kind of remove that part of the photo or clone that out and do the same thing down here. Maybe just do a little quick back and forth and something like that, okay? And then the next thing we could do is just get rid of little chunks in our line there. So let's do that. I'm just using the clone stamp. And we're just going ahead and breaking this up and sort of creating this dashed line effect, okay? Now what we could do is we can try this in two ways. We can grab the patch tool and just select each one of these one at a time and go ahead and just work them out. And I think that's doing a pretty nice job. Let's do that. And a little more of that. Here's another one. This is a big one. I think what we need to do is grab, uh, let's go this way with it. And let's get rid of this little guy. I think this looks, even though if, if maybe we were in a rush, you could see that the uh, spot healing brush did a really good job. But I think this played it off way nicer. And I kind of see a couple little problems in there. But I think that looks pretty good overall. This looks a little flat. And that's better for me. I'm OK with that. I'm going to hit Command-D, deselect. And then lastly, we just have to fix up this little portion here. So let's grab our clone stamp again. I think we're going to really need that. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new layer so I don't have to be super careful. That way we can just simply uh, do something like this. I'm going to grab from this area. I know it's, it's really the same um, texture from over here that's going on over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in and throw a mask on that layer. I'm just going to select down here, put a mask on it, grab my mask brush that's in the presets, and paint back the leg where it got a little cut off. And let's just swap to a white brush and fix where it gave me a little weird bump right there. Good. And let's go back to black. You can hit X on your keyboard to swap from uh, the foreground and the background layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this up where it will be wood. We'll fix that in a second. So uh, we're getting close. Now I'm going to go ahead and flatten this layer, add a new layer, and start using the clone tool again to just kind of work this. Now again, I'm not going to be super careful with it because I put it on a new layer. And I'm going to try to use the edge. So I'm going to sample here and just kind of paint right back there, right on the edge, and just kind of connect it the way it was. So let's do the same thing down here and paint back in there. That looks pretty good. Good, good, good. Oops, I missed that. Let's try this from here. And paint that in. Get rid of all this. And there we go. Looking much better. Good, I like that. Perhaps we can just kind of straighten out this line a little bit. Same thing here. And blend that in a little bit better there. And maybe get this a little bit better. And just pull from. I would say nobody is going to notice that we can maybe just blend some of these little spots and to tell you the truth I didn't really need the uh, mask so we'll go ahead and flatten that down and now we can move on oh I did not see this lens flare so let's go ahead and just grab our patch tool one more time and maybe we can just sample from right there 
and I think that looks pretty good. I always just like to zoom out. If you get in too close, uh, then everything can start to look bad. Let's use our patch tool over here, get rid of this buoy. I like that, and let's see if there's any other big mistakes. Well, we've got this tool. Let's grab that and that, and some of these uh, bigger pieces that are just a little messed up back there. I'm going to deselect, and let's move on to these spots in the sky. I'm just going to grab the spot healing brush. This is going to make this much faster, and I'm also, while I have my tablet, and since I have pressure sensitivity, this is a great time to point out that you know, versus using a mouse or your trackpad, um, having that sensitivity lets me select a larger brush. But if I just want to fix a small thing, you can see how even though my brush could be this big, I could just tap lightly and fix something that big. So that way I can keep a brush that is going to essentially fix um, a range of issues with just one tap, depending on how much I press down on the stylus. So let's just go through and anywhere I see these little spots, we're going to get rid of them and just clean up and let's keep moving around the photo. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do as decent of a job as I can. I don't want to spend uh, all day on this for the sake of, you know, losing your attention, but let's just keep going and get rid of the main stuff. Ooh, this is a mess over here. I guess I don't shoot at such a high aperture normally, so I don't really have this problem. I mean, that's kind of the nice thing about the way I usually shoot is you don't see those issues. Um, we can even use this tool is going to work down here even well in the water. So if there are some bad spots in the water, this will still help out greatly. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't see anything too, too bad at this point. Just giving it a quick scan. And I think we're doing pretty good. Okay. And while we've got the uh, spot healing brush, the one where we don't really have to think too much, I'm going to go ahead and just get these little bug bites on Mela because it's on the leg. It's where the texture is, is pretty much the same in, you know, throughout the leg. So this does a really good job of guessing. And if it doesn't do a perfect job, I'm still going to do a pass with the uh, healing brush. And I can always go ahead and correct some of the, the small mistakes that might occur when using the spot healing tool. So let's just run through this pretty quickly and we're getting close. This is where my coffee is really helping out. Oops. And if we see any weird things we want to get rid of on the background, now would be the time. I'm going to undo that. If I, do, if I see it do something I don't like, I'm going to save that for the healing brush, but we can get some of the little spots. This photo is so zoomed out. There's just not a ton of detail left, even though I'm not sure if I shot this with my D3S or my D800, but I'm guessing uh, it was something like the D3S. It's not, it's not super detailed in here. It's looking pretty good. Okay, cool. So I'm going to grab my spot healing brush now and, or I'm sorry, my healing brush, we just did the spot healing brush, and just work down the photo. So this is a part where we might uh, kind of zone out my blabbing and just let this run. So we will catch back up on anything uh, important that I see that's worth pointing out with this, or when we get to the next step of uh, correcting the toning and coloring issues on the skin. So I will talk to you guys again in a second.
Okay, I have just finished all of the healing on the skin. So let's jump into the next thing. Let's work with toning. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my darkened clone stamp. And I just wanna fill in a little bit in the hair, a little there, a little there. If it starts looking a little smudgy, we'll just grab the uh, sharpen tool and kind of give it a quick swipe wherever it looks a little flat and blurred. Um, so let's go ahead and grab that one more time and just kind of work uh, through any of the highlights that I think need fixing. Like I think we could even tone this back just a little bit and maybe even that little highlight just a hair. Uh, working down the body, I think it looks pretty good. Maybe just fill that in a little bit and just there a hair. Let's grab the light and clone stamp now and see if we can fix any of the odd shadows. For instance, I think we can just get a little under the eye here without completely eliminating it and then even work in this little shadow on the nose. You know what, I'm gonna undo. I kinda think it, it helps just with that last bit of it. I'm gonna work under this eye as well. Again, without completely getting rid of it, but again, I'm working it enough that we need to come in and just address that loss of texture, uh, but we'll do that in a second. I'm gonna get rid of that little bit of a droopy mouth look that happens here when she's got her head kinda leaned and maybe even reduce that shadow just a hair. And this little, this little hair over here, this would be a good time to kind of come in and clean this up with the Lighten Clone Stamp. And I think that looks better. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Let's grab our uh, Sharpen Brush Tool and just go ahead and kind of work over some of these areas that we just worked on just to bring back some of that texture that went away. That's good. Maybe even grab our healing brush and just remove this little highlight. I think will be just better. Since it's already running low on texture, I don't want to use that clone stamp in that case. And maybe we kind of work this up a little bit too. Cool, I like that. And back to our light and clone stamp. Um, we could even just kind of get rid of that a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. I, wanna, I think I want to fill in that little line, so let's get, grab the dark and clone stamp and just kind of work that a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to undo that one hair. I think this we can still use the healing brush because it's a small fix and it's already, uh, again, kind of at a loss of texture. So let's just go ahead and use that. There we go. Good. Okay. Um, looking down at the photo with the light and clone stamp, we could just reduce this a little bit on the collarbone and I'm gonna grab out of this sample off the chest area here and just kind of lighten that shadow a bit and I'm sampling now from the neck and just dropping that back a little bit so it's not so intense with that shadow um, looking at the rest of the photo it looks pretty good there's sort of like a little vein or something there I just lighten up we can lighten up some of the veins in the hand and even use that over here to just kind of lighten. Oops, let me undo that one bit. There we go, something like that. And let's see if there's anywhere else. I think that's looking pretty good. We could just kind of lighten up some of the lines in this hand, and I think that's good too. Cool. All right, I'm happy with that. Um, I would say the next move is we go on to skin color issues. Let's grab our hue correction brush and see if there's anything we need to fix with color. Um, I think it just all looks pretty good. This arm looks a little on the pink side, so let's grab some of the uh, skin color there. And I think one of the, it, the real problem here is it's actually just missing color. It's, it's almost going a little grayish. So let's get our uh, sponge tool from our tool presets. It's set to saturate, and we're just gonna give this a couple brush strokes to bring a little color back into it. Same thing, uh, I'm gonna look around. Anywhere that looks a little washed out, I can just give it a little pop of color, uh, maybe even on the chest a little bit, on the shoulder, and even inside near the nose. As you can see, it just looks a little gray in there, and right there, and just under the eyes, and that looks a little bit better. And let's go ahead and just look down at the feet. Everything has some color, looking good, and I'm happy with that. So let's move on to our first step in our actions. Uh, so I'm gonna go to step one, hit play, and this is for the hair highlights. Honestly, I just see maybe we can add a little strip right there 
and I think that's good. I'll turn that off for a second so you can see. I like that little shine. Um, and we're going to go to the eyes next, going real close here, make our brush just big enough to kind of get in there, give it a few little swipes, and I think that's good. And look, here, I'll just turn it off for a second. Off, on, and it's just a little pop. And then we're going to go to the sharpening, grab our sharpening brush, and just paint the eyes. Again, this is stuff that we covered in a bunch of the earlier lessons. Um, so I'm going through it a little quicker, uh, but just I really want you to see the full the full retouch. Now, while we know we're, we've got a little brush that's giving us sharpening, I'm going to go ahead and just paint in some of these areas that are that could use a little bit of um, detail. So just around the boat and trees and all that. Even you know what? Let's do it in the sky and the clouds too. Cool. Our mask looks something like this now. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this down. Jump to our dodge and burn. And let's let that one play. And this starts us out with the, uh, the burning, the darkening of the skin. So we're going to go ahead and just work some of these little shadows that already exist just to give it a little more contour, a little more depth. And just work around the arms, get the stomach, all these shadows here. Let's work through this. And... Good, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, lighten layer. Just work the, sh the uh, highlights that are already there. And I'll show you guys in a moment what the mask is looking like. Just maybe one swipe on the face couldn't hurt. Let's do that a little bit. Just res constantly resizing my brush and just getting everywhere where I think could use a little extra highlight. Now, this is one of those images where it's it's a little more of an exaggerated shot to begin with. So I'm going to be okay. Let's turn this off for a second and see the before and after. And it's pretty intense, but I'm going to probably bring it down to say just around 30% because I want that little extra uh, effect in this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 30 and flatten that down. Now, we just, uh, in our last shot, we use the um, ACLE filter. Let's go ahead and while we're still working on, you know, sort of the color and the detail in the shot, let's run that filter on this photo as well. And this is gonna help bring out some of that extra texture uh, in the image. So let's see, move it from my other screen here. And it gives us this little uh, slider. We're just gonna turn that up a little bit and then hit okay and see what it does for us. Okay, so here is the effect. I'm gonna hide it for a second and then show it. Hide it, show it. Now, look at, watch the, uh, the trees back there, the sky, the boat. I mean, that's, I think, a really cool effect. I don't love that it darkened the water, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's throw a mask on it and let's take our masking brush, which is 100% opacity, but let's change it to Let's bring the flow down to say 30%, okay? Somewhere around there. And I'm just gonna use a soft brush and kind of bring back some of that original uh, water because I didn't need all that extra help on the water. So let's hide this for a second. And you can see I'm kind of now getting back to where I was with the water. And it's a 30% opacity. I'm just gonna give a nice um, pass over Mela and just bring back the original Mela just a little bit. So let's hide it again, off, on, off. And I don't mind that it, it, it gave her a little enhanced effect, but I don't want it looking um, super, super fake. So let's just hide it again and see if there's anywhere else that I wanna kind of tone that back. But I think that's looking pretty cool. Maybe we just drop the layer back completely a little bit again. I don't want this to look uh, super fake, but it is a dramatic shot. So if I turn it down, that's without the effect. And let's start bringing it back up and say go somewhere around 65%. Uh, and I like, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead, leave the shot there, and then uh, move on and flatten this. Let's do one more thing in this photo. I want to just bring uh, back some of the shadows that are down here in the boat. Um, if we go up to image adjustment and shadows highlights, this gives us, let me pull it from the other monitor here. 
um, this nice little uh, set of tools for working with the shadows. Now, it looks awful, and this is why I like plugins like the, a, uh, the ACLE plugin. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cancel this for a second because what I want to do is copy my layer, create a new layer, and then we'll go back to edit, I'm sorry, image adjustments, shadows, highlights, okay? So that's where we're going to go ahead and check it off. And we're working on the shadows. Let's first of all take this amount down. I'm just going to pay attention to the boat. That's really what I want to look at. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of play with all of these different little sliders and see what they give me and, and what kind of effect they lead to. It's like if I pull on the radius, it just kind of goes a little soft if I go that way. And again, I'm just paying attention to inside of the boat. I'm going to go back with the tone for a second. I actually like it down a little bit. And I'm not worried about the highlights. I'm just going to bring all those to zero. And color. Let's see. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that either mutes it if I bring it down, or it just adds a little color if I pull it up. So let's keep it somewhere where it was so it has a little, a little extra help in the color. And midtone. Let's try this. No, I don't like what that does. So let's just go ahead and kind of reset that. Um, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. Now, overall, do I like the effect? Let's hide it and show it. I'm not crazy about it back here. I don't want it on there. I don't want it affecting Mela. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw a mask on it. And then I'm going to use my... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to take that back. I want to throw a black mask on it. So I'm going to hold Alt and then hit the mask, add mask. And then I'm going to grab my uh, masking tool and make sure I change it to white because what I want to do is start revealing that effect down here in the shadows. So maybe up here as well. And that I like better. So that's just a little help to bring out some of that detail. Let's hide that and show it. I like that much better. So, and, and we can even play with the opacity since it's on its own layer. So let's go somewhere around like 80% with it and then flatten that. So we're looking pretty good. It's, we've got this pretty dramatic shot. I think this is a, just a cool effect. Um, you know, it's, it's not a natural uh, angle. It's not a, you know, natural lighting. So I'm okay with this just going a little further in the extreme. Uh, direction and since we've done so far all of our images have have stayed you know very natural looking um, I'm okay with uh, giving you guys an example of where we could kind of take one and just go a little uh, just go a little more extreme with it so uh, from here I'm gonna go into liquify next and I'm gonna go ahead and start with her head I could see that this shot just got a little warped um, just from uh, the perspective so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pull her face and head down a little bit. I think it just it just got a little skewed and even here. Now we could address that by um, working with the uh, angles and, and doing a free transform like we showed in the last photo of uh, Mela on the boat but th I think this is a pretty simple fix and I just want to point out that I, you know it is something that I'm paying attention to. So let's go ahead and just kind of work the ear a little bit and the hair looks a little flat on this side. So I'm gonna just fill it out some, work this. And I think we're getting a little bit closer. I think we can lift up on this side just a little bit. Even where the eye is, I think we can lift a hair and maybe even pull everything up just a bit. And to me, that's looking a little more, um, a little less distorted, uh, I should say. So let's jump back in here and just you know, fix everything up, just give her a little all around reshaping, but just being very subtle with it. And I think this is good. I don't like the shape of the bikini here, so I'm going to kind of help that out a little bit. Good. Same thing here. I'm liking that much better. It's kind of Good. Okay, I'm liking this. Let's even give her just a little nudge there. I'm just being careful with the line on the boat um, because I don't want to warp or skew or create any giveaways where, you know, people are going to just scream and point Photoshop. So, okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and just do the same stuff here. I'm just working with the lines. 
already exist. And let's do the same thing here. We got a bunch of nice lines that we can just stick with and we're just kind of stretching things out. Now, if you guys recall, in one of the previous lessons, I showed you all how we can take uh, models that are, say, maybe a little on the shorter end. Um, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm like noticing that I maybe missed. They, they look like little bug bites. I know they're just little moles, but I don't want them to be mistaken. So let's just go ahead and, and clean that up a little bit. OK, cool. Um, so we talked about before how we could sort of stretch a, uh, you know, a shorter model by just um, pulling the entire photo. So I'm going to unlock this layer, grab my move tool, and just pull it down just a little bit. And I think that'll do the trick. I'm going to check that off, flatten this, and then move on to our final steps. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know what, one more thing we could do while we're at it is let's just... Uh, this is another great photo that we can use our color uh, select color range and maybe just pick out the sky. I want to make sure I'm picking the sky and not the. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and open up. No, let's, let's tone down the range a little bit. And I'm going to grab the plus eyedropper and just kind of work around this and grab all of the sky that I can. And let's just keep clicking around. As long as it's not doing anything weird or grabbing Mela, um, I'm OK with that. Just clicking around there. It did pick up her suit. And I think rather than you know clicking on her um, to fix that, We'll just paint that out of the mask in just a second. OK, so I like that. Let's go ahead and hit OK and add a curves adjustment layer. Remember, curves is sort of the most versatile. We can mess with color, tone, all that stuff in one shot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just double check the mask for a second. So let's grab our, let's grab our masking brush. It's, it's a, just a black brush that we can use to come in here and even clean up some of this. So I know I don't want to affect that part of the boat. Let's go ahead and just paint this out, paint her swimsuit out. And that looks pretty good. Let's not let her little white eyes uh, come through, or we don't want to affect that, but we're going to paint all this. I'm OK with uh, the window of the boat getting hit with some of the effect, but let's go ahead and fix this as well. There we go. And this, and this is more of the boat. And I'm just going to make a huge brush here and fill in all of this stuff. OK, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. Oops. Hold Alt, click that. And now we can work on the mask. So if I pull it down, you can see it's just picking out the sky and doing a really good job. Okay. Before I do that, though, there's one thing I just want to address is I'm going to close this for a second. I'm going to click down on the background layer and add one more adjustment mask. I just think that even though we adjusted this in, in uh, Lightroom with the color, um, let's grab a curves adjustment layer. And let's go through the channels. I'm going to start with blue, but I just think that this photo still looks a little warm. Like even the sky looks a little too warm. So when I go ahead and add a little blue into it on the blue channel, I think it really kind of helps bring back more of a natural color to this image. So I'm just going to go through each channel real quick. And no, green, I think, I think if we go the other way, we're going to end up adding red, but I don't think we want that either. So I'd say that that layer looked pretty good. And then we go to the red channel and see, do we need to add anything that direction or go in the other direction? And I think the answer is no. I think we were fine just somewhere, maybe just a little, little less red. There we go. Good. And that looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to close that out. And now jump back to our layer that we were just working on where we've got our mask and we're just working with the sky. So now 
now I think we have a much more um, uh, natural color overall in the photo. So this is just giving me a better taste of, of what I'm really uh, working with. So let's kind of work through this a little bit. I, I just want to add a little contrast to it. I think the sky was going a little flat. So I'm just adding that, uh, that S curve. Let's make this a little bigger. And sometimes I like to work at a small, uh, smaller image because it just gives, it lets me kind of soak it in a little bit more. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to go down to blue. And now what we have the sky selected, let's just see what it looked like if we added some blue into just the sky. And I think it's starting to get a little, a little too fake, but just a little addition, I think is not a bad thing. Um, green, we can mess with and see how that works. I'm okay with that. But I'm liking this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and just hide those two curves layers that we just added a second ago. So let's hide those and see how it was just kind of dingy and yellowy looking throughout. We add them, add in those new layers and we've brought in the sky. We've added some contrast to it. We've got some blue in the photo now. I'm liking this uh, much better. Um, I think it's just giving us a much nicer effect overall. So I'm cool with that. A um, couple other little things I want to address is I think her legs just go a little dark in the photo. So let's go ahead and fl I'm going to flatten this down and I'm going to throw our uh, run our step two dodge and burn one more time. I'm going to hide that uh, contrast layer that we added and I'm just going to work on the lighten layer. And it's got, I've got the right brush in hand, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make this brush really big and just paint in a few strokes down toward the legs and just, oops, I'm getting a warning there. And I think, let's turn that off for a second, and that just opens it up a little bit more, and I think it just needed it. Maybe I just backed it off just a hair, but let's hide it and show it, and I think that just gives us a nice help. Um, and then we could even just go ahead and add a little highlight to the water. And I think the corners are just going a little extra dark. So while we're in this uh, lightning mode, let's just go ahead and use that big brush, paint the corners in a little bit, and let's take a look. I think we can just balance this out a little bit more and just added a little more even lighting to the photo, a little more realism to the sky by just kind of getting rid of that vignetting. Um, and I think we're, we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to flatten this down, hit OK. And the last step, well, first let's save. Um, we're going to just do our uh, film grain. Um, okay, let's go ahead. We added the film grain, and I think this gives us just a nice little bit of texture. Um, so I'm going to leave that as is and flatten it. Uh, one thing that's just starting to catch my eye a little bit more as we kind of work on the whole photo are these little highlights in the water. Why don't we grab our... You know, let's just grab our spot healing brush. I want to just always show you guys the easiest way um, and just go ahead and get rid of these in one quick swoop. Just going to paint over all that and that looks good to me. So, okay, we got rid of those distractions and uh, I think we're going to just move on to our last step. Let me save it one more time. Filter, alien skin, exposure seven. Now, we're going to just run through my presets and see which one kind of looks the best and see if any of them help. I, I kind of like the direction this takes us, but I think it's just too strong. So let's bring down the overall intensity and I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And once this I'm, wa I'm waiting for that change to occur. I'm waiting for that new layer to pop up. And there it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to see this maybe a little smaller. And I'm going to hide that for a second and see what it did. It just took down some of the, um, uh, some of the saturation and it just it softened some of the highlights. And I think it made it look a little more realistic. But let's just go somewhere in between and maybe say 50%. And let's show that and hide it. And there we go. I think we are at a really nice place on this photo. And you guys will have this file. You can feel free to, to play around with it. Um, maybe, you know, if you wanted to work on some more detail in the boat, um, pull some more color out of the, uh, the trees in the background. But I'm okay. I, I like, I'm really kind of liking this photo. And let's just go ahead and see the original uh, one more time. Let's go ahead and just use the edit fill 
and history. And so we went from this to this, and I think that is a pretty, this is one of our more drastic changes um, working on a photo, but uh, I think we definitely took it in a much better direction. And this is a photo I would be happy to uh, show the world. So thanks for uh, sticking through this one. I will see you guys on the next full retouch. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this excerpt. Obviously, as you can see, Joey's technique is not just about swimwear photography. It's really about portraits and retouching in general. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, you can head over to fstoppers.com store.